Hi, my name is Christine Natras, and I'm going to be talking about background fluctuations in jet studies and heavy ion collisions. Most of this work was done by my postdoc, Antonio da Silva, and my graduate student, Charles Hughes. So we want to study jets and heavy ion collisions, but there's a large background. So to make precision measurements, we need to understand this background. The ELISE experiment did a measurement of random cones drawn in different orientations in the event, um, and we're going to be comparing to that um, using the 10 gen event generator developed here at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, and Pythia Angantir. First of all, the 10 gen generator is designed to emulate the majority of the correlations due to hydrodynamical flow without having correlations through such effects as jets and resonances. And what we do is that we first fix the even ordered event planes arbitrarily at psi equals zero, and then we randomly throw a reaction plane at angle for the odd order event planes. This roughly captures the essence of the correlations between different event planes in the data. Then for each of the tracks in the event, uh, we use a fit to the blast wave function and we randomly select a momentum from that distribution. And once we have the momentum, we use a parameterized fit of the VN to figure out what the VN would be for that a particle of those momenta. Um, and then uh, once we have the VN, we construct an azimuthal distribution for the um, particles of that particular momentum, and we randomly select an azimuthal angle for the particle. We repeat this for the number of particles that, um, that we have measured to be in the events, um, so matching the measured multiplicities. The pythia angantir model is pretty much the opposite extreme. Um, there's no hydrodynamics and there's no jet quenching, but there are lots of jets and there are resonances. It is based on pythia 8 and it is pretty much a superposition of nucleon-nucleon collisions. <clears throat> We're focusing on the area-based background subtraction and I want to make a point about jet finders, which is that um, when you input tracks and particles into a jet finder, your output is a list of jet candidates, but it puts all of the tracks in the event into a jet candidate, regardless of whether or not that track was re related at all to a hard scattering. So in a standard area-based subtraction me method, what you do is that you estimate the background energy or momentum density by first um, clustering all of the particles um, using the KT algorithm, giving you a sample of jet candidates dominated by background only candidates. Then you look for the median in that sample and you the medium um, momentum divided by area to get a background density. And then um, you use that to correct the momenta of the of the jets and your jet candidates to get a better estimate of what the jet momentum is. Now, when you draw random cones in the event, you would expect that the random cones are totally unrelated to, the, to a hard scattering. So you take the momentum in these random cones and you add it all up and you subtract off this, this estimated um, background density, you should expect to see on average nothing, but you can look at the fluctuations this way to see if you understand the fluctuations in the background in the event. Um, another thing that is done in most studies is that you exclude the area around jets, so you will find the, the one or two leading jets in the event and then draw um, a box around them a little bit larger than the jet in order to exclude a little bit more because we know jets extend beyond um, the resolution parameter we typically use in these studies. So here you can see that uh, this particular jet would be excluded because it's too close to, this random cone would be excluded because it's too close to a jet in the event. So what you see here is, you know, on the left side is the measurement done by Elise. The red shows um, what you get for all combinations. Um, all particles. The blue shows what you get when you throw out a jet, and the black shows what happens when you randomize the phi and eta, breaking all correlations in the event, including jets. And what you see in the lines are fits, which I'll discuss in the next few slides. 
On the right hand side, you see comparisons for the most central data to um, the Ongentier generator and to the TenGen generator. Um, the TenGen generator is simulating the average number of particles observed in an event class and not the, um, we don't have the fluctuations in the number of events. So this is part of the reason why it doesn't exactly recapture what was seen in the data. So you can take these distributions and fit them to get the width and what should the width look like. Um, this problem was already solved for uh, ET distributions in events in this paper by Mike Tannenbaum, um, you can approximate the spectrum, the single particle spectrum, as a gamma distribution. And then when you add up n different particles randomly selected from that gamma distribution, you will get another gamma distribution. And you can relate the, um, the, the average width um, that you see in the in the distribution that you see, it is the square root of the number of particles times the, um, the width in the single particle distribution. But of course, when you're looking at an event sample, you are not always drawing the same number of particles, likewise for our random cones. So when you add in these non-Poissonian fluctuations in the number, you get an extra term due to fluctuations in the number. In a heavy ion collision, we add non-Poissonian fluctuations due to flow, um, and you can see the, the form here. This is making an assumption that the Vn are uncorrelated with each other and that the only effect is fluctuations in the number of particles <coughs> in and out of the, um, in, in different orientations relative to the reaction plane. So um, you can fit the distributions I showed previously. On the left-hand side is what was done in the ELISE data. The red shows the inclusive distributions versus the number of particles in the event. The blue shows what happens when you get the, when you throw out the leading jet. And what you see is that the parameterized form matches the, um, the data fairly well. And the black is what you see when you randomize the phi and eta in the event, showing that you get back to pretty much perfect agreement with the, um, the parameterized form. On the right hand side is what we see um, for the 10 gen generator. Um, the, the circles show what you have with no VN. And when you zoom into this data over prediction, what you see is that already you have discrepancies on the order of one or two percent, even though we have no VN. I'm going to come back to why that is. And then when you add VN, you see discrepancies up to five percent. We also see something, uh, some, discrep some major discrepancies when we look at Ongentier. So <clears throat> the blue shows what you have if you, uh, the blue shows what you have if you look at all of the tracks in the event. The red shows what happens if you throw out one jet, and the yellow shows what sh happens if you throw out two jets. You see slight differences when you throw out leading jets, but not a major difference. Um, and then the lines show the parameterized form for what you'd expect from a completely random event without VN, of course, because Ungentier has no VN. And the discrepancies between the prediction and the data are up to 20% here. That's a pretty large discrepancy. So we did some studies to look into why that might be. And if you randomize the azimuthal angle of the track breaking the jet correlations, um, what you see here is that you still get discrepancies on the order of about 20%. So I'm going to revisit that, dis that derivation for the shape of the width of the distribution. And I wanna point out a couple things. Um, when we had the non-Poissonian fluctuations due to flow, we assumed that these correlations are, these fluctuations are uncorrelated, but of course the even um, order reaction planes are nearly 100% correlated with each other. So you actually do get some correlation between those fluctuations. And we saw that when looking at the 10 gen generator. And then um, when we looked at the derivation for even without VN, there was an assumption in there at the very beginning about the shape of the distribution, that this was a gamma distribution of order two. And when we compared to Ongentier, that as assumption was the only assumption left and we see that that fails. So what we see is that the comparisons with the 10 gen generator and Ongentier broadly support the conclusions in the 
the Alice paper, but both studies indicate that we are sensitive to the shape of the spectrum. And the 10 gen studies indicate that trivial flow correlations are also important, which highlights the importance of um, doing the background subtraction in data exactly the same way that you would do it in a model, <clears throat> emphasizing how important it is that we go back and we implement analyses in Rivet 3.0 now that it is heavy ion capable. Thank you.